In any case, there's a handout today. Hopefully you guys all got it. And we're going to be doing trees. And as a few people have observed, hey, we did some of this before. And I did actually just copy some of the procedures from before. But there are many, many more exciting procedures on trees that we're going to do today. Yay. So today's trees, trees, trees. So to just sort of refresh our memory, trees. Let's say we had something like this. Okay, so here's a tree. Trees don't have to be binary trees. How would we represent this tree in Lisp? So the way we can look at this diagram is this here is a three element list. First element is one, last element is five. The second element points to a two element list. In this two element list, the first element is two, and the second element is another two element list. Three, four. So your midmost list should be three dot four? No, why would it be three dot four? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Is your... Oh, that's right. I mean, three, can you distinguish a pair from a list? In, well, it depends on how you decide to represent a tree. We're representing a tree by using lists. We're not using con cells. Now, we could try to, if we had a binary tree, it wouldn't work with a three element tree. But let's say we did have a binary tree. Maybe I should put a few less layers in here. Okay. So then we could represent this as con cells if we wished, where the car points to the left side of the tree and the could, could point to the right side of the tree. So this would be an alternative representation for trees. Yeah. Now, if we represent them as con cells instead of lists, we lose sort of the nice property of being able to cut her down the list looking for nils. So what we're going to have to do if we're in this sort of representation is we're going to need to check if our second pointer is a pair or if it's a single element, similarly with the car pointer. So we're going to just need to check things. Instead of being able to say null, check for the end of the list, we'd need to check to see if we've got a pair or an element on each element of the tree. So it's a different, different representation. We have to do things differently. Now, if we were to do two different representations, what would be a nice thing to do so that the user wouldn't see this? And we could build some sort of data abstraction where we map something into the left child and the right child, and it would depend on how we look at it, and then we would have some test for no more tree. Um, but there is a key difference between this tree here and that one, and that <coughs> this one doesn't have to be a binary tree. Okay, So these aren't exactly the same. So today we're going to be looking at these non-binary trees, and we're going to leave that cons representation for you guys if you want to go off and play with it. Because I know you guys have lots and lots and lots of free time. Okay, so let's see. Page one has a couple of trees to find, count leaves, which we did, fringe, which we did. I do not believe that we did some fringe. Is that correct? We did not. Uh, nobody remembers, so we'll do it again. Let's write a procedure, some fringe, on a tree. So what I want this procedure to do is to add up 
the leaves of the tree. So it'll return 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. If you recall, fringe return the list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Some fringe is going to add the result of adding those. That's fringe. That's some fringe. Isn't that some fringe? <coughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, first thing we check. Do we have a null tree? We do have a null tree. What in this case should be our base case? Zero. Zero. Right, we're adding. Next case, what do we want to check for? If it's not a pair. Right. To make sure, to see if we have a single element. And if we have a single element, what do we want to return? That element. That element. Okay. Now what do we want to do? <coughs> right, we need to sum fringe on the car and the cutter. We probably want to do something to combine them. I'm going to add the sum fringe on the car of the tree and the sum fringe on the cutter of the tree. Okay. Now, assuming that we had just looked at fringe, which is on your sheet, we haven't written on the board, and some fringe, there's some pattern in these. Because scheme is all about capturing patterns. Let's write accumulate tree. Okay. Let's think about what's the pattern that we can capture and what's going to change. So let's look at some fringe as an example. What are the pieces here that you think are going to change? From time from each procedure, the null value minus right. Some sort of a term procedure. Okay, so. We need a term, a combiner, a null value, and hopefully a tree. So have a tree. Make sure I get the parameters in the right order. Term, combiner, and a null value. What's this procedure going to look like? Am I still going to have this cond? Basically, anything that I didn't circle or square off right here is going to stay the same. Obviously, we'll change this name. So, cond null tree. We have a null tree, null value. Okay. If we don't have a pair, meaning that we have a single element of our tree, what would we like to do? Turn to the tree. Otherwise, of what? Accumulate tree on the car. <coughs> Can I just close there? No, you gotta yeah, send all the other stuff. Term, combiner, null value. With an accumulate tree. on the cutter of the tree, also passing term 
combiner, and the null value. Okay, given accumulate tree, tell me how I can write some fringe in terms of accumulate. Here, well, we need to call it. <laughs> so we're going to accumulate tree on the tree. The term is what? Identity, which we write as. Okay, there's our term procedure. What's going to be our combiner? Plus. And our null value? What if I want to multiply the fringe? It's going to look pretty much the same. Still going to have the same term procedure. Okay, so what if we want to count the leaves of the tree? I want to know how many leaves there are on the tree. So question is, what if we pass this term car? Well, if we get here, and our term is car here, and we say car of tree, but we don't have a pair, what's going to happen? They have a popular boom. We're going to get an error because we don't have a pair, and we can't apply car to something that isn't a pair. So we'll get an error there. So we can't use car as our term. Because when we're using term, we know that we don't have a pair. So you wouldn't want to pass car, could, or any mix of them as your term. Is not pair basically atom? Atom doesn't exist but in our version of C. You could define, sure. You could define. Atom of x. <coughs> to be not pair x. Okay, and some scheme books will use atom. I believe the first edition of this book actually uses atom. And there really is no difference between a pair and a mix. I mean, pair question mark is almost like saying this question mark. Pair question mark is just checking to see if we have some sort of box and pointer structure. List. So a list is going to be null terminated. So a pair isn't telling us anything about whether we have something that's nil, terminated with a nil. All it's telling us is this sum box and point of structure. So 4.3 is not considered a bit. Right. So that's actually a cons cell. That's cons 4.3. That's not a list. <coughs> it is a pair, but it's not a list. Okay, we want to count the leaves of a tree. What? Lambda x one. So we just want to count each leaf. Cool. So the term is the term only applied when you're you're down to a single. All right, term is over here. The only time term is used is when we're down to a single element. So what we need for term is we need a procedure that takes in one argument and does something to it. Can return one, zero, the identity, depending on, depending on what we want to do. And actually, we'll see a case right here. Let's write fringe, which if you look at page one, you can recall the definition from a few classes ago. Let's write fringe in terms of accumulate tree. OK, 
Okay, so what's the term procedure here? List. So, say, Do I have to do that? Can I just say list? It would make a list. So what I'm asking is, instead of passing this procedure, could I just pass it like that? Well, term, we would substitute in the list procedure, and list could actually be applied to tree, and it would actually work just fine. So either of those would work fine. Questions on that one? It's just like we passed plus here before, instead of passing in lambda x y plus x y. How does it work if it's not a two argument combiner? What does list do? Let's say we only had one. Well, that's equivalent to cons one onto nil. And if we have list one two, well, that's cons. 1 onto the cons 2 of nil. Okay. So this can take any number of arguments. So we can actually use list here, or we could use list as our combiner without having to wrap a lambda around it. Just like we could do the same thing with plus or times. We don't have to have it take a specific number of arguments. The procedure itself can do that. With that representation, is there an extra step involved with the lambda? I mean, I know it's very little, but there is an extra step. But. Right, because the lambda creates a procedure object and then it's applied. Whereas this, it'll just look it up and apply the procedure. So we're not actually creating an extra procedure object. OK. So that's our term. What's going to be our combiner? Append. Which I can write that way. Or I could write. Lambda x, y, append x, y. Either way. Finally, what's going to be my null value? No. Empty list. No. Okay. So our, ter our terms, our, com our combiners, doesn't need to be just something on arithmetic. We could have list operators as combiners. Why could this not have been written with uh, the term being lambda x, x, and the combiner being Okay, let's actually write that, and let's see what happens if we do it that way. Let's define, I'm going to call this copy for maybe some reason. <laughs> and let's accumulate the tree. And what we're going to do is pass a tree. You want the identity element, and then cons, right? And then nil. Let's follow this through. Let's find some board space to follow through on. Let's keep accumulate tree since we're currently using it. All right, so we're going to copy a tree. So let's copy something small and happy. One, two. So copy one two sets off a call to accumulate tree, which I will abbreviate as a dash t, of the tree, our list one two, our term procedure, lambda x x, our combiner, list, consort. OK, what happens? Got the call. Is our list null? Is it not a pair? It is a pair, therefore, not a pair is false. So we come in here, and we call combiner cons on accumulate tree of the car of the tree, which is? The list one, and then if you guys wouldn't mind, I 
because it's going to be the same every time. I'm going to cause that to accumulate tree of the cutter, which is, is it just two? It's a list two. There's our list. The car of the list, what's point two here? That's the list one. The cutter list, what's pointed to here? That's the list two. Okay. So now, cons accumulate tree on the list one, fall here. So we're going to cons two things together. Accumulate tree on the car, which is? to the accumulate tree of nail. The cutter of this, so the car, this is what we're looking at right now. The car points to one, and the cutter is nil. Okay. So, and then we have, well, let's finish up this call first. Accumulate tree one, not null, but this becomes true. Term of the tree, is one. Okay, now we're going to accumulate tree on the nil. Well, that's null, and we return the null value, which is. Okay, so here we've got cons one nil. Now let's go off and look at accumulate tree on the list two. Well, that's not null. It is a pair, so we fall through to here. And we're going to cons accumulate tree on the car, which is, what's the car of the list two? Two. To the accumulate tree of the cutter, which is? OK, so accumulate tree on two, term tree, which is? Then this goes through, it's the null value, nil. So here we got cons to nil. Okay, so I'm going to cons two things together. Cons one nil, well, what does that give me? The list one. And cons two nil gives me the list two. What happens when I cons these two things together? Well, actually, let's just draw the box and pointer diagram. See what happens. So I've got the list one and conveniently drawn the list two. I'm going to cons these two things together. I build a con cell. It's the car. That's the cutter. Does this look familiar at all? We've rebuilt the exact same structure. Yeah. Now, why would we possibly want to build the same structure again? Because we might want a copy of it. If we make a copy of our tree, so this is our copy. So let's say we define this to be C. So this is going to be C pointing here. And let's say that we had defined this tree here to be something like A. If I ask EQAC, what will be returned? False. How about if I ask EQV on A and C? Still false, because remember, EQV is going to use EQ when it's testing out pairs. How about equal? That is going to be true. Okay. So we haven't talked about mutation. We will next week. But we're going to find that we have ways to go in and destructively modify lists. So what we might want to do is if we're going to destructively modify a list, make a copy of it first. So then we have a copy of the original list. And then we could modify our changed copy. But we'll see that next week when we start talking about mutation. 
Other questions? Sure. Right, because Right, because a tree doesn't need to have multiple structures in it. So this could be the same as the old ones. Sure. But it's less efficient on flat lists than the one we than the ones we wrote specifically to deal with flat lists because we're calling the functions. So the question is efficiency, and, and in fact, we are making one extra call here, right? Because in a flat list, we would assume here that we could do something straight away to the car of the tree. Okay, so it's a little different in the way we've written the code, and we would make an extra call to the function. But it's going to function and act the same way. Other questions? Okay. Let's look at map tree. Do you guys recall map from lists? Okay. Let's write map for trees. Okay, so the difference is going to be that if you applied map only, let's say we just applied map to a tree that had some, some depth like this. Am I going to run into trouble with it? Well, what map is trying to do is just trying to apply the procedure to the car. When I get to the car here, is it a single element? Can I apply something to it? I might run into some trouble if I'm trying to just add, because I can't add a console. So let's write map for trees. OK, so map tree, and which way did I? An operator to a tree. OK, so what do we want to do here? I guess we could accumulate tree, sure. Wasn't the way I was going to write it, but sure. Okay. <coughs> What's my term? Okay, here, lambda x. Op x, or oh, right here also, op. Okay, so either of those is going to work. So that's how I get my term. What's my combiner going to be? Cons. Because I don't want to change the list structure at all. I'd like an identical list structure, so I'll just use cons. And my null value will be there you go. Now we have map tree. If you'd like to see the alternative way to write map tree, you can look at your handout, the top of page three. I could rewrite it here if you'd like. This is another way we could write map tree. Slightly less elegant. We check if the tree is null, nil. Not pair tree op tree else cons map tree op car tree to the map tree op. Tree. That's conned, not and, by the way. Yeah. Different way to write it. Okay, once I have map tree, of course we're going to want to use it. So, what if I want to write a procedure called scale tree? I'm going to scale a tree by some factor. What would I write here? Map tree. Now we want the tree first. <coughs> Sorry, op first. Sorry, yep. Lambda. Okay. 
And now the tree. Okay, so if I wanted, let's say I have a tree called tree 1 defined, how would I scale my tree by 10? I'll scale tree, tree 1, 10. Hmm? I'm sorry, actually, I didn't hear it either. So the above procedure with 10 past tennis factor? Yes. All right, it's a call to the above with 10 as a factor. Okay, and that's going to preserve the list structure. It's just going to scale every element of the tree. What if I wanted to... See, maybe I want to write something where I zero out the elements of the tree. So I preserve the tree structure, but I change all the elements to zero. So, yeah. So zero tree could be defined to be scale tree. Eh, need to pass a tree. Need to pass a tree. There you go. Would you even define it as a separate procedure, or would you just call it a scale? It depends. It depends on how you wanted to use it. Let's say we wanted to use this a lot. And if we wanted to zero out a tree to reinitialize our tree for some reason, we'd probably want to call zero tree. It would make our code easier to read. Whereas if we called scale tree, tree, and zero, it's not quite as obvious from the name what's happening there. So we could redefine it. We wouldn't need to, but it would make it a little bit clearer to read it that way. OK. How about? I'm going to define zero tree to be what? Well, you had it, except you, you don't have it as a procedure. It's just the tree would go into scale tree. This? Yes. How do I get the tree here? So what? So I could define something that wraps it. So I could say lambda tree, <laughs> scale tree, tree zero. Is, is that any different than actually writing it this way? It's, just a, de-sugared it's, a, de it's a de-sugared version, right? So either one of those is going to be fine. OK, let's actually, we could also write this a different way. We could define zero tree of a tree, well, we could just do a map tree where we have lambda x 0 on the tree. <coughs> Same thing. Different ways to write it. Yep. What if you had a, uh, a tree full of symbols as opposed to a tree full of numbers and you wanted to clear all of them out? So we could define uh, replace symbol tree with some symbol. Okay, and here we would do map tree lambda x symbol tree. Okay. So to replace everything in the tree with some symbol that we wanted to use. Some of our map trees, the one in the handout asks, is it a number? Only trying to apply an operator to a number. So right. We need the more general purpose map. For question mark. 
And in that case, we would have trouble if we had a symbol. This is actually, this is the better version. It would be better to write it. Well, we could define map tree number where we check to make sure we have numbers. But this would be the more generalized version of map tree. Number means that it's both a number and not a pair? Number question mark, right, if it returns true, if it says it's a number, we know it's not a pair. Well, we don't actually need to write any accumulate tree. Term could actually be a lambda that had some sort of test within it. Right? So our term, we could write something like Lambda x, let me say, cond number x. And if we have a number, then whatever. We want to do something to it. Otherwise, if it's a symbol, do something else. Actually, that's not just symbol. It's not a number. We can just say else. Uh, now is that just as good? Um, well, I mean, this is a little bit messier to have to pass in that sort of a term procedure. It's not really neat. It's not really very elegant. We could write filters. We could certainly write filters, right? Right, and then we could filter out anything that wasn't a number and then pass it over and do all sorts of things like that. But with the rest of class today, and maybe we won't need the rest of class in this, in which case we'll come back and look at some of our other procedures. I want to look at actually depth first, but rather breadth first search of a tree. This is a question I got from Baruch at uh, the end of the class. Last time we did trees, how could we go through a tree and print it out in breadth first order instead of depth first? Or five, it would be better if I drew this a little bit lower. Everything that we've been doing so far would be a depth first traversal. And what that means is we go to the left branch and we go down as far as we can till we hit the leaf. Well, in this case, it's just a one. And we go back to the main node, go down the next branch and follow the left one down as far as we can. Go back up to the node, follow the next branch. Go back up to the top, down the next branch, off to the left, back up to the right, back up to the end. Okay. So that's going to be a depth first traversal. We start on the leftmost branch, go as far down as we can, and then we backtrack to each node and go down the right children of that branch. A breadth first traversal. Well, in this case, what we do for breadth first is we want to look at this level first, and then we want to look at that level second, that level third, and if there were any other levels, continue going down. So in this case, if we did a breadth first visitation of the leaves, we would get a one. These are not leaves. Then we have two. 3, 6, followed by 4, 5. So let me draw this as a list structure so we can see about how we're going to attack this problem. The topmost list is a list of three elements, with the first one being 1, <laughs> with the second one being a list of two elements. And that list has a 2 as its first element and a 3 as its second. And 
And then the third element, well, that's a list of two elements. And that list of two elements has, as its first element, another list of two elements. And the six over here. You guys feeling comfortable with box and pointer diagrams? Mm -hmm. okay. This is the way that we envision when we do list structure, this is the way we start looking at stuff. Okay, so what I want to do for a breadth first traversal. When I draw it this way, I can say, well, I want to look at this list structure first, this level of list structure. That's my first. Then, this is going to be my second level of list structure. <coughs> and that's going to be my third, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So given that list structure, Let's not start writing code. Let's talk about how the heck we're going to do this. How are we going to think about traversing the tree? So far, we've just been cuttering down it. But we can't do that. We can't just go off and take the car and do all the stuff we want to do on the car. So what we really want to do is we want to walk across these elements first. And then we want to get down to these elements. Okay. So how could we do that? Okay, we can check if the car is a pair or a number. Or well, we could, to be more general, say an atom, if it's a pair or not. Because we may have lists of symbols that we want to traverse in breadth first order. Okay. So we want to check to see if the car is a pair or not. Well, in this case, the car is not a pair. What do we want to do if it's not a pair? We're going to add it to our list. If it is a pair, what do I want to do? So in the case here, where I've got a pair, what would I like to do with it? I want to leave it alone, right? I don't want to do it right now. But I want to come back to it. So we're going to have some procedure, breadth first, that's getting past a tree. So I somehow need to remember that I want to go back to that tree because I don't have an extra variable. Well, if it's a pair, what I could do is I could take that structure, the car of my list, and I could bring it up here. Right? I could append this tree to this subtree. And this is going to have the nice property when we do this append of taking away one level of the list structure. Okay. So then we basically promoted it up here in our list and taken out one level of the list structure. Yeah. Does it append the other way? No, what append does is it cut down each of the lists in the first, and then it just <coughs> basically the last cons, it cons is onto that list. So it'll have the list two, three, and we'll just cons to it. So append. Should I rewrite append for you guys? No, no, no. Append takes list one and list two. It cutters down list one, building up a structure of basically the car, 
of list one with the cons of the catter of list one till the point where we hit nil on list one and that final cons has list two. Okay, so the appends basically cuttering down the first list and then sticking it with the cons to that second list in the append. Okay? Yes? What happens to the cell that was pointing to the two, three originally? Well, what's happening is we're starting to cut her down the list. When we got to this point, this would have been our tree here, actually, right? We would have been looking at that. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cutter of the tree that I'm currently looking at, in this case will be this, which had the nil, and append that to this moved up. Yep. So now when we get here, the car is this list structure. I'm going to take the car, this is messy, append it there, and continue going down my list. Let's write some code and then look at how the code's running. So let's define breadth first of a tree. So I have a tree, and we've been talking about what we're going to do if we have a pair or not a pair. But what should we do first with the tree? <coughs> Make sure it's not null. If it is null, what should we return? OK. Second, not pair tree. <laughs> so if we don't have a pair, well, we talked about how we're breaking this down. Did we talk about how we were building it back up? Are we going to use cons to append? Or are we going to use cons to build it back up or append to build it back up? Right. We need a pen because this is what we want to return. We want to dump all that internal list structure. Make it all go away. So if we're going to be using a pen, then we want to return the list of our element. Else, we've just been saying we're going to use a pen. Okay, what are we appending? Well, actually, have we finished yet? That's not right. Car repair. Because if we know if we've gotten to this part of our cond, that we can safely take the car of the tree, right? because I've just made sure that tree is a pair by that step above. So if I get here, I know that I can safely take the car of the tree, and I'm checking to see if it is a pair. If it is a pair, what do I want to do? Well, we need a recursive call, but first we need to somehow leave something behind to build up our list structure, right? All right, so we're going to No. Okay. Scratch about leaving stuff behind. Do we need to leave stuff behind right now? If I've got a pair in my car, am I appending anything right now to my answer? No, right? There's nothing for my answer yet because I don't have an individual element. All I want to do is put that off to do it later. So we're going to just make a recursive call to breadth first because we have nothing to append here. There's nothing that we need to delay to build the list back up because we don't have an element to put on the list. 
Okay, so our recursive call will be breadth first applied to what? Append of Cutter? I hear cutter and car. Cutter. Take the cutter of our tree. So in this case over here, we were talking about this case. So this is the car of the tree that we just checked. This is the cutter of the tree. We're going to take the remaining list here, and we're going to append it to the car of the tree. Questions? <laughs> Otherwise? I'm going to append it because I want to flatten my list. But won't that reverse it? That'll put it in the back. No, append does no reversing. So all append does is it cutters down the first list, keeping it in the same order, and then sticks it onto the second list. But we don't need to flatten it with the same pair. It cutters down the first list and it sticks the second list on the end of it. Depends on the card. If the card of the tree is not a pair, why do we need to flatten it? It's already flat. Well, we saw with copy that in some cases where we do get down to a non-pair, we still need to use a pen. But here's a cool thing. If we're using the append on our tree and we're bringing our tree up like this, are we going to actually have anything left to flatten at this point? So we can actually cons. Hmm. Yeah. In the tree. All right. I actually wrote this on the handout with a pen. So now we're going to cons what to what. Am I going to hit that not pair case very often at the top? No. Depends on what the tree looks like. But for the most part, right here is where we're taking care of those single elements. Right? We're actually not recursing on the car of the tree, we're just consing it on here. Yes? Is there any way, I don't know if you have time stepping through briefly. Yeah, let's go through it. Let's clean everything up and do it. Okay, we want something with depth, but that isn't too long. So let's do one, two, yeah, I'd rather. The one in the handout is the list one, two, and then three, four. Okay. I'd rather, I'd rather have it be in the. <coughs> list one, two. I'd rather have, yeah. What should this return? One, four, two, three. One, four, two, three. Okay, so let's do it. Is the tree null? No. Is the tree not a pair? Is the car of the tree a pair? Would this help if I drew out the list? Let's draw out the list.
There's our list. Top level is three elements, one, two, three, and the second level has those two elements in it. Okay, so is our tree not a pair? No, it is a pair. Is the car of our tree a pair? No. no. So we're going to cons one to the result of calling breadth first on the cutter of our tree. Our tree is now that. It's easier for me to write the numbers in the substitution stuff. So cons one to the breadth first of this list. List null? No. It is not a pair. Well, yeah, it is a pair. So is the car a pair? Yes. Yes. So <coughs> I'm going to call breadth first on append the cutter of the tree, which is the list four. This is the cutter of the tree here. To what? Car of the tree. This is the car of the tree. Okay. Now, I'm going to append the list four to this. What this will come down to once we make the calls to append is will be consing four onto this list two, three. Which means our structure is now going to look like this. This is gone. We're going to take four and cons it to that. This I'm going to erase right now. Scheme would keep it around. We would need to do something to get rid of it called garbage collection, which we will see at the very end of this course. But let me just do it myself and erase it. Now I have the list 4, 2, 3 being passed to breadth first. OK, so this becomes cons 1 breadth first, four, two, three. Questions so far? Okay. Breadth first, four, two, three. Nil? Not a pair? No. Car a pair? No. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to cons the car of the tree, four to the result of calling breadth first on the cutter of the tree, the list two, three. This is now our tree. OK, breadth first two, three. Not null. Not an atom. Car is not a pair. So now we have cons one. Cons four, two, some number of parens. Okay, is it BF three or is it BF list three? Right, because we're taking the cutter. That is now our list. Cons one. Cons four. Cons two. Okay, BF on the list three. Not null. It is a pair. The car is not a pair, so we fall through to our else case. And we will cons the car three to the cutter, BF on the cutter. Okay. Cons one. Cons four, cons two, cons three, BF nil, returns, nil, finally. 
and this starts collapsing. So this makes the list three, and then we're consing two to it, which gives us the list two, three, and then we're consing four to that, which gives us a list four, two, three, and then we're consing one to that, finally giving us a list one, four, two, three. Is this what we expected? Yes. Yay, we're happy. Can we do that entire thing without using the second rule? Yeah. yeah. Do we need the second rule? Or is it just this tree? Okay. Do we really need the second rule? Are we actually going to hit a case where we hit that second rule? If it's a well-formed tree, we shouldn't hit that, right? Which rule are we talking about? This one here. Do we need this? It gives us a nice error check, right? Because here, we're going to go try to take the car of the tree. And it gives us a nice little error check to make sure that we can get the car of the tree. But because we never recurse and any of the single elements are passing the list down, we shouldn't actually hit that case. So we could take it out and try things out and see if it works okay. I just did it works on all the lists that we uh Huh? I just tried it. It works on all the lists that we fed it. But it would work if you fed it a single number. It's not gonna work if you feed it a single number. But one could argue that a single number is not a tree. But in fact a single number could be a tree, right? Because that could just be the tree with a node 3. I, mean, we, I guess we could just draw this. That We could just say 3 is a tree. It depends on how we define our trees. There's no pointer. Yeah. Hmm? Right. Right. Are we error checking? Is it worth the error checking? It depends. On, it really depends on how we define a tree and how a user thinks a tree can be. And if a user thinks a number can be a tree, like this, as opposed to this, then we should have that there. Can you just, uh, I mean, if you, want, if you wanted that kind of error check, put that on top of, an ins of a function that's inside, so you just check the tree when it goes in and then just rehearse on, on a loop that's inside? Sure, we could do that. We could have an additional loop that when it's passed in, we could say, is it a number? If it's not, then we'll call the helper function and start running off on it. We could do it that way, too. So this case is probably not going to be used. It'll be taken care of by everything else. Questions on searching this way? Or printing elements out this way? When would we use fetch for search? <laughs> what a good question. Anybody have any ideas? Depends on what your tree is representing. It depends on what our tree is representing. If it's representing a family tree, you might want to print it out by generations rather than by. Right. So let's say we had a family tree represented by our tree. We might want to say, who are all the children? of the main node. So you know, we have you know, your great-grandparents and who are the children of your great-grandparents. And you'd like to find out who their grandchildren were and finally who their great-grandchildren were and maybe great-great-grandchildren depending on how far back it goes. Okay, so it'd be one case where we want to do breaths first search. But well, wouldn't this kind of apply to the problem set too? Like looking at pre rests mm -hmm. and you look at this layer, then you want to look at the layer beneath that. Yeah, breath first search would give, us, give you the order you needed uh, if you built the tree up where you had everything going back, then you could get it in the order you would need to take them. Sure, it could apply to this. You may not need to do it in breadth first search, but this might apply to the problem set, yeah. <laughs> the other thing this tree might be is, let's say we had some sort of a representation for a game of chess or something, and we'd build out some tree, 
and every leaf turns out to be a move where we end up winning. We may want to find out the shortest number of moves to somewhere where we win. <laughs> so we'd search the breadth first to see the shortest number of moves it would take us to win the game from that point. So that might be something. So, so basically what you're going to do is you're just going to keep doing a breadth first search across all these moves until you hit a leaf. And when you find that leaf through the search, then you would say that would be the shortest number of moves it's going to take for me to win the game. Yes? Or similarly, if it's computationally intractable to do a depth first search, you may want to do just breadth first uh, as you go along. Right. You can do it as you go along. So maybe you don't actually want to enumerate every possible chess move. Right. Um, you guys heard of Deep Blue, IBM, yes. chess playing computer? So part of their win was that they had lots of processors and they could look ahead more steps. So they had a deeper search, but they couldn't still enumerate a full game. Right. So that's part of what's going on. So if you couldn't enumerate the full thing, you might go to some maybe strategic advantage point. So rather than marking a leaf as, I want to find a, a leaf where I win, you could say, I want to find a leaf where I consider myself to be in a, ba a better strategy or a better, not a real chess player, as you can probably tell, but I'm in a better board, whatever it is, position as opposed to my opponent. Okay, so that's one other thing that you could be looking for with the death of a search. Could you give a real life example of when you might want to flatten a tree or flatten top level like you had in your Yeah, you might want to flatten things in your homework assignment. If you get lists of lists, maybe, or um, although flatten flatten is different than um, fringe. Okay, just to point that out. Fringe is sometimes called deep flatten. So there's flatten and there's fringe, sometimes known as deep flatten. And this is going to remove one layer. Of the list structure. So let's say we did a flatten. On the list. One. Two. Three. Four. Well, what flatten would return is the list one, two, and then the list three, four. Okay, so it's not going to flatten everything out. It'll flatten that top layer, one layer only. Fringe, if we applied fringe to the same list, you'll notice that my trees are usually conveniently ordered. It would return the list one, two, three, four. So that would take a additional list structure if we had it. So that's the difference between the two, which is why sinus is called a deep flatten, because it will recurse and continue to take out the list structure, whereas flatten will only do one level of it. Other questions? That's all I have for today. <laughs>